kitchen today and I've had some people ask about elderberry syrup and I actually think I'm gonna do a whole playlist on elderberry because from start to finish um, our journey with elderberry this is our first year to be able to harvest um, fresh elderberry um, I've made syrup for a long time but I bought it so I want to go ahead and get started and the first thing I'm gonna do is put my pot on on high and I've got four cups of water that I'm going to bring to a bowl. Now, I have already gone through my elderberries and sorted through and have gotten out as many, many green berries and stems as I could. Um, the green berries can be toxic if they're cooked, so you want to try to get you don't want to cook a ton of green berries, in other words, is what I'm saying. So, most of my berries that I have are um, purple, and you can see it did dye my hand purple, but that's okay. Um, you want to get as many green as you out as you can, stems and stuff out as you can. So, um, my berries come from the freezer, and like I said, I've already sorted through them, and you do not want to consume elderberry raw. Now, I think I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but elderberries do need to be cooled. So, um, the only other thing that I'm going to add to my syrup is cinnamon sticks, ginger root, and cloves. Um, so once I bring this up to a bowl, that's the only thing I'm going to add before we move on to our next step. Now I do want to tell y'all, so I looked up, because I've looked this up before, but I just wanted to tell y'all a little bit about elderberry, and I know I could have easily been like, y'all just need to go look it up, but I know a lot of people probably won't do that. So I've looked this up before, but I want to tell y'all why our family does this. Elderberry, antioxidants, vitamins, boost immune system, lessens inflammation, has antiviral agents, and it's heart healthy, and fights against cancer. Cloves. We got these from um, Mountain Rose Herbs and the uh, ginger root too. So cloves protects the liver. It is um, healthy for your stomach and your digestive system. It also fights off cancer, helps with diabetes, it boosts your immune system, bone strength, and it has antibacterial properties to it as well. Ginger root, it helps with nausea and any type of stomach dis uh, discomfort. I also read motion sickness, so anything like that, uh, digestive issues. Antioxidant promotes respiratory health, boosts immune, and also fights against cancer. Cinnamon. Um, I have used cinnamon powder before in this, um, but I, I usually use cinnamon sticks. It is a very strong antibacterial, antifungal, um, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory. It helps lower blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar, and also improves with your digestion. So, um, all of these things are so good, so good for you. Several lots of antivirals and antibacterials, anti-cancers, um, immune boosting. So these things are so good for us. Um, so I just wanted to read those off to y'all so that y'all would know. Um, again, our journey with elderberry, you know, I, we started going on a search um, this past spring, the beginning of the spring. And um, I wanted to find my own elderberry. So back in May, I have a video up and it shows you how to go through the woods, different things to look for to spot elderberry because you don't wanna get a random berry and consume that. You wanna know what you're looking for. So finding the elderberry, then we did some videos on harvesting the elderberries. So now this is gonna be some videos on elderberry syrup. So as soon as our water comes up to temperature, um, we'll start adding our ingredients in. Okay guys, so our water has come up to a full bowl. So I've got a cup of elderberries that I'm going to turn this on down to like a, my low medium, kind of like a sim simmer. Um, I'm putting my elderberries in. I am going to add 
three cinnamon sticks. Three cinnamon sticks. And this is really optional. Um, I've read recipes that just call for one. Um, I've used two before. Three is kind of our magic number where I like it. So I'm using three cinnamon sticks. I am going to these cloves, these little clove holes. So I'm just going to grab probably a half of a teaspoon, a tablespoon, half of a tablespoon of those. I may add a few more in there. I, I, this is something that I kind of learned over time. Um, you can use a recipe if you need to. I'm not much of a measure. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't like to measure it much. Um, ginger root. Now this can have a little bit of a strong taste to it. So I'm going to add um, about a tablespoon to that. And, and depending on your taste, you may make it once and say, ooh, I don't, I'm getting more of this taste than that taste. I don't like it. And you can alter it um, however you like. So now I'm just going to cover this up. I'm going to let this simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes. And um, once I'm done simmering, we'll turn it back on. And I'm sorry I'm having to yell over the baby. He's down to like a nap a day. Um, so it's really hard to do any filming or recording because when he's asleep during that short amount of time, I have to do other things. So when I can stop and, and record, I just have to do it. So um, we haven't had lunch either. So we're just going to do it the best we can. And um, can you say hey? And I have to talk over him. I'll just have to talk over him. So uh, we'll, we're going to turn it back on once we get up to our uh, 30 to 45 minutes. I'm probably going to go more to, more to 45 minutes. Um, but you want to have it on really, really low, like a simmer, um, for at least 30, for at least 30 minutes. All right. So I've measured about a cup of honey. Um, Depending on my batch, I like one to two cups of honey. In this batch, I did just a cup. So I'm going to go ahead and get my cinnamon sticks out. And I realized not long ago that my compost bin was not in here. Uh, one more. And I'm going to very carefully start pouring off over my strainer and this is still pretty warm and I want it to be warm because I want my honey to dissolve so right here I'm just going to mash that down and try to get all the juice out that I can And then I'm just going to repeat that until I get every bit of juice off that I can. Now, to be honest with you, this is the first time that I've done fresh berries from the freezer. I did a set of fresh berries, um, <clears throat> but they stayed pretty dark. But this is the first time I've done fresh berries from the freezer. And um, it's a little bit lighter. It's still pretty purple, but it's a little bit lighter. Usually my um, mixture is, is pretty deep purple. So I don't know if freezing it has anything to do with that. So again, I'm just going to continue to repeat that until I get all of the juice strained off. Because when you work so hard for these little boogers, the last thing I want to do is um, not get every bit of juice that I can. Because by the time you pick them, you sort them and get all of the, the yucky stuff out, 
get them clean, get your syrup made up. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a very, very tedious process. I mean, it's easy to do, but it's just very time consuming. So I want to make sure that I'm definitely getting as much juice off as I can. Okay, so I've got all my juice in here with my honey, and I want to stir it very well. Like I said, my juice is still warm, so I let it simmer for 45 minutes, and then I let it cool down just a bit, because I didn't want the really, really hot juice in here on my honey. Even though I want it warm, I don't want it so hot that I would destroy, uh, I don't want it um, to the point where I might cause any damage to my raw and filtered honey. So I wanted to make it warm enough to dissolve the honey, but not too hot. So now I have my juice mixed up with honey. And like I said, for this size, I did a cup. I have made double and triple batches before. Um, Sometimes I've put two cups, I've put four cups, just depending on um, really the taste. And um, how much I've made. So that's perfect. It is. All right, so sweetness is good. Um, I probably could have done a little less ginger root this time, but once it cools, it will take some of that tanginess away. Um, and my kids absolutely love this, so it is very kid friendly. And you can always, like I told you guys earlier, make it to alter it um, to exactly how you want it to taste. So that is it. That is the steps, the final steps to make an elderberry syrup. And happy homesteading, y'all.